Welcome back. Week 16 of Cycle 1, Science Experiments. Earth Science continues on. Psalm 24, 1 is our scripture. The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. Today, we are talking about two natural happenings in the crust of the earth, crust and below. And what's happening um, during these things? These at times can be natural disasters, earthquakes, and volcanoes. We have other things like hurricanes and tornadoes and all those things. But today, we're going to talk about what's happening in the earth during an earthquake um, as well as during a volcano. So the first one we're going to think about is an earthquake. So who can tell me what is an earthquake? What happens in an earthquake? Um, and what do you know about that? Does it cause problems? Why? Um, remind me again, what are the layers of the earth? The layers of the earth are core, mantle, crust, biosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. So in the crust, the part that we stand on, what is it made of? It is made of rocks. We've talked the past couple weeks about rocks. Rocks are made of minerals. Rocks that have um, valuable minerals are called ore. Um, so the crust, the part we stand on, the part we see are made of different types of rocks. What are the different types of rocks? Sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. Um, so we've got our three types of rocks. We're standing on those. So picture a rock. Tutors, if you um, think to grab a rock, I might try to grab some rocks um, or get some out of the parking lot. Um, look at a rock, think of a rock. Do you think a rock can stretch? It's solid, it's hard. Do you think it can actually stretch um, ever? And yes, no, why or why not? Get their hypotheses on that. Um, and then for our experiment today, we are going to use a balloon and a marker. That's it. Um, our balloon is going to represent a rock, okay? Um, and so for our purposes, it's going to represent a rock. The um, first thing you're going to do, I did this before on here, because it's, again, easier said than done to draw with a Sharpie on a balloon. Um, but you're going to make a square, and then you're going to color in the two sides so it looks like that um, on your balloon. And then um, the little part here, the square that I drew on my balloon, um, are representing the little particles of the rock. Okay, so this is our rock. These are little particles within the rock. What do you guys think is going to happen when I blow on this balloon? Are the particles in my rock going to get bigger, smaller, not change at all? What do you think? I'm trying to blow just a little bit. Okay, so first of all, blow just a little bit so you can observe and talk about what's happening. So what happened to the particles in my rock? Did they stretch apart? Yeah, they did. So if this is my rock, did the same amount stretch up here as did down here? No, different parts of the rock have stretched in different ways. Why did the balloon um, or why did my pretend rock here stretch? What made it move? And it was the air that I blew into it. Well, in an earthquake, something similar is happening and it's called tension. So I'm going, what do you think will happen if I continue to blow this balloon as big as it would go? Well, the particles of my rock get farther and farther apart. Would my balloon and or rock ever eventually explode into a whole bunch of pieces or pop? Yes. Given enough tension, given enough pressure, this would explode. Okay, now what do you think is going to happen when I let some of this air out? Are the pieces in my balloon um, and the particles in my rock 
going to come back together? Will they look the same or not? No, kids are going to think that's hysterical. So, <laughs> um, okay, so we're back to here. Is it looking similar? Um, what do you observe or notice about the particles of our rock? Um, and we're going to let all the air out best we can here. All right. Does it look like how we first started? Pretty much, a little bit. It's a little bit stretched out. Um, but pretty much it went back to the shape of the square that you can identify and the floppiness of the, the original shape of the balloon. So then we can analyze the results and our conclusion comes to, we can further this discussion on the tension. So what was happening here the tension of the air blowing into this balloon allowed the particles of the balloon and of rocks to expand or to stretch apart. Now, this same thing happens in an earthquake. So, in an earthquake, we have different plates of rocks in the crust of the earth. And with certain... Um, reasons. We're not going to go into all of that, but the crust of the earth, these plates will shift and move and go together and push apart. And these are an ever-changing, um, small, some small, some big fluctuations of the plates that make up the crust of the earth. When this happens, sometimes these crusts or these plates will be together and they'll shift apart be it from pressure underneath of the crust usually, um, or from other natural disasters happening, but there'll be pressure from underneath that may cause the, the crust, these rocks to pull apart. When that happens, it causes something called tension stress. That's what's happening in our balloon. The tension from the air is the same thing as the tension that pulls rocks apart. Now, some rocks have an elastic property that when that tension stops, they will go back together. So, <clears throat> just like our balloon did, went back to its natural shape and how it started. Sometimes, though, the tension can be so severe, significant, that it will pull, pull, pull a rock until it pops and crushes into a whole bunch of pieces. And that happens, too, depending on the strength of the tension. There are other types of stresses that happen in an earthquake. There's compression stress. Again, when it's compressing again, instead of pulling apart, it can push together and sometimes push so much that it goes up and creates landforms going up like that. There's shear um, stress that happens from just the, the plates of the earth moving and shifting like this. It will shear off rock into pieces. And so there's different stresses that happen during an earthquake. The one we're talking about today is called tension stress. And the main conclusion or idea is that yes, some rocks can stretch and then go back to their original form, <clears throat> which is pretty cool because you wouldn't normally think of rocks, something solid like that, being able to actually stretch apart and then the molecules being able to come back together. So that was our first one. As that's happening, that goes very nicely into our next experiment because those stresses we just talked about, so tension stress, pulling apart of the plates of the earth, may leave what? Cracks, fissures, valleys in that new place, in the crust. And um, other ones, compression ones, might lift up um, and create other new landforms or shapes holes in the crust of the earth from earthquakes and just from the natural shifting of the plates of the earth. So as when those things happen and create new openings in the crust of the earth, there's something called magma, which is down below the mantle, well not below the mantle, but between the mantle, in the mantle, in the man between the mantle and the crust, there's magma, which is basically liquid, hot liquid rock, where the rock has been compressed so much below the crust that it has melted um, and is a liquid form. 
Now, the next experiment we're gonna talk about is the spurt and all of our materials there are this toothpaste. And so this toothpaste represents the magma underneath the liquid rock, okay? And we just talked about that through earthquakes and through the shifting of the plates that these cracks, valleys, landforms, holes are formed. And the magma then has an opportunity to shift. I'm gonna show you a picture here just to give the background information. So here's the crust of the earth. Here's the mantle. And the magma is floating around here. Well, again, when there's shifting of the plates, there's these little cracks, there's these little fissures that go through different, and the magma is looking for a place to go. Likewise, with our toothpaste, what do you think is gonna happen when I put pressure on one end? Or when I put pressure on the other end? It moves because it's a, a liquid form. Now the experiment says to start with a half full thing. It's more fun to just start with the whole one. What do you think is gonna happen when I put a lot of pressure on this toothpaste? Ah, it's gonna explode, right? So we're going to, oh, my magma's going everywhere. So you can start with that to show that demonstration and then close it up. Then you have a little more pliability. Um, so it's gonna be a tutor demonstration and then you'll pass this around. The balloon's just tutor demonstration. Pass this around, let the kids all have a turn squishing the magma. So if, you, if there's tension or stress on one end, the magma is gonna find a place to go. What if it were squished on the bottom? What's well, gonna find a place up top? What if you were squished in the middle? It moves and finds its place to go. And so magma, that hot liquid rock, goes through that. Now, when there is a hole or an opening in the Earth's crust, um, then it allows this magma to escape, and that's when it turns into lava. That's when it's called lava, um, when the magma escapes. Other places, the magma can move around, and it can get kind of close to the crust, and as it does, it will harden and form igneous or molten rock. Um, we, we know about igneous rock, and that's what it is. It's magma that has come closer to the crust and cooled down and hardened. But when it escapes, it's called lava. In week 17, we will learn the parts of a volcano. And so we have our magma down here. We've got our vent the crater where it explodes out the top, and then you've got gases. So you've got the crater, magma, vent, crater, gases, and something else I'm missing. Um, but those are our parts that we'll learn next week in week 17. Um, so have fun talking about those um, natural happenings that just demonstrate the majesty of our creation um, and the power behind it.